When the texts give maps for the practice, this can be in the canon, can be in the teachings of the Ajahns. They make it sound very smooth, step by step, easy, smooth, one directional practice, always and ever up. And then you look at your own practice, though. It goes up and then it comes down, up and down. And it's easy to get frustrated, but it's not wise. The wise attitude is to take things one step at a time, and to remember that the mind is a complex phenomenon. And John Lee makes a comparison. He says, some people's minds are like banana trees. They have only one leaf that they have to create, so they grow very fast. Large trees, though, have to create lots of branches and lots of leaves, and so they grow slowly. So don't compare yourself with the text. Don't compare yourself with other people whose practice seems to be going faster than yours. Because your practice is your practice. And it's essential for your well-being. And you have to remember, we're not here just for the, the pleasure and the rapture. We're here for all the other skills that go into training the mind. Each time you find the mind wandering off and you bring it back, that's strengthening a very essential skill. The skill to get your mind off of a bad topic and bring it back onto a good one. So even though it may happen many times, the fact that you're able to come back many times is a good sign. And you're also developing the observer in, inside. In some places they call meta-consciousness, M-E-T-A. The ability to watch your own mind, observe your own mind, and not get sucked into all of its stories and all of its moods. The moods and the stories are one thing, but your awareness is something else. Each time you pull out of a thought world, you strengthen that sense of the separate observer. And that's a very useful skill as you go through the day. Sometimes it's difficult to take the sense of ease off of the cushion and back into the day. Sometimes it can happen, but sometimes it's hard. But what you can take all the time are the skills. The skill of not just riding with your mind whichever direction it seems to run. And even though it may run for a while, the fact that you're pulling back a little bit, that's part of right effort. Right effort is an essential factor in the path. Generating desire, upholding your intent, maintaining your persistence, to abandon unskillful qualities that have arisen. Notice that thing. Unskillful qualities are there, and you're going to do battle with them, and you're going to try to figure out one way to get yourself motivated to do it and stick with the effort. This is one area where desire is actually a helpful thing. The desire to want to do this well is not a bad thing. I was reading an explanation, a couple explanations of right resolve. And strangely enough, they have the resolve for re renunciation, meaning the resolve to renounce all desires. That's not what the Buddha said. Renunciation here means that Renouncing sensuality, the mind's tendency to waste a lot of its time planning tomorrow's sensual pleasures or your next sensual pleasure for the next hour or whatever. You can go over that for hours at a time, thinking about how you'd like this. No, you'd like it like that. No, maybe change this a little bit. And you can keep going around and around and around this way. And the mind really feeds on this kind of thinking. That's what we're trying to get past. And then if you're trying to get the mind with a breath, okay, that's your intent to get away from sensuality. And then you're trying to strengthen that. And then you're trying to figure out ways to remind yourself why you're doing this, to keep yourself motivated, 
you get to use the principle of heedfulness, realizing if you can't do it now while well, you're in relatively good health, relatively sane, what are you going to do, say, if pain gets really, really bad and you start getting delirious? And the mind will just jump for anything that seems pleasant. And you know what happens to people that jump at anything? They, they end up jumping into places that they later regret. So you want to have some control over the mind so it doesn't go shunning off into that area. You have to remind yourself of why you don't want to get involved in that waste of time, which is sensual thinking. And keep yourself trying to develop a sense of the pleasure that can come from form. And whether the pleasure comes automatically, the fact that you're aiming in this direction, trying to think of the breath, trying to think of the body right here, right now, as you feel it from within. That's all right effort. And the complaining voices that may come up say this is a waste of time. You have to learn how to slough those off, too. Don't listen to them. Don't identify with them. Try and always to identify with the effort. And John Munn, toward the end of his life, gave a Dharma talk and he's talking about going into battle with the defilements. Your determination is that you don't want to come back and be the laughing stock of the defilements ever again. That's the soldier in his analogy. The soldier has the weapon of discernment, fed by concentration. But what keeps the soldier going is that firm determination. It's a firm desire not to be fooled by greed, aversion, and delusion ever again. That's your motivation. That's you right now. And the more you can make that you, and identify with all those thoughts that cluster around that identity, then you find it easier to let go of some of the other identities that would pull you away and say, well, I just want to meditate a little bit so I can have some nice stress relaxation. I'd like to have a nice, smooth, quiet evening in the mind right now. I don't have to work or think or anything. We're here in battle. You've got to do battle with your greed, aversion, delusion. Sometimes they get really quiet. It doesn't seem like much battle. Other times they can be really hard. And so you want the skills. You don't want to have just the sense of having a nice, pleasant, easy meditation and satisfy yourself with that. You have to ask yourself, what skills am I learning? So at times when greed does become strong or anger becomes strong, then I'll have the skills I need so I don't get taken in. Even though we're in battle, we do want a sense of ease. That's why the Buddha makes concentration with a sense of ease and refreshment an important element of the path. But in the days when the ease and the refreshment are not coming quickly, you have to learn how to feed yourself with something else. And that determination not to come back, or at the very least the determination not to be fooled by your greed, aversion, and delusion again. And that's what happens when you give in to the voice that said, this is a waste of time, the meditation is not going anywhere, I'd be better off doing X, X, X. You give in to that, they laugh at you, the defilements. They tricked you again. And so there's an element of pride in here, and it's a skillful pride, though. The pride of wanting to master a skill, a harmless skill, a useful skill. A skill that can take you someplace you've never been before. Now, it may take time, but don't think about how far it is or how long it's going to take. Each step you take, as long as it's in the right direction, is a step well made. Learn how to encourage yourself. That, too, is an important skill to take out of the meditation in a daily life. Because there'll be times when you come up with difficulties. Things in the world are going in all directions right now. Who knows where things are going to go? You want the skills of mind that say, okay, I can handle whatever comes up. I'm not going to be overwhelmed by anything. 
And that's what you learn in the meditation. And you realize that one of the big things that weakens you is a mind that's out of control, where you just give in to whatever the mood is. Because when you start sliding with the mood that way, who knows where it's going to take you. But even though the mood is there, frustrated, upset, whatever, part of the mind is separate. And it can watch and not run along with that. That's what you need. Without that, you're lost. So this separate observer that we're working on here that can pull out of a thought, at least for a little bit, is something you want to develop again and again and again. Because that's the basis for gaining the control you're going to need so that your mind doesn't take your places you don't want to go. So remember that even though the pleasure and refreshment are an important part of the meditation, they're not the whole meditation. The skills you learn to keep your mind under control, those are the really essential part. And even if they don't come quickly or easily, the fact that they're coming and you're moving in that direction, that's something that should give you heart, the heart to keep going.